So hello everyone, my name is Marco Serrano. I'm an associate professor at the University of Toulouse in France. And today I'm going to present a work that was carried out by Gary Perelman, Emmanuel Dubois and Alice Probst, where we studied uh, visual transitions when using uh, head-mounted display-based mixed reality around tabletops. So we all know that tabletops are a good uh, device or display uh, for working in shared spaces. Uh, because they allow for multi-touch interaction uh, and they are good also for analysis tasks. However, one of the limitations is that they have a limited display space, particularly when multiple people want to work around a shared visualization, such as maps, uh, that they may want to enrich with, for instance, private information. So in that case, uh, one alternative could be to uh, add more screens, uh, as in these uh, very large walls. However, this is usually very expensive, so not very convenient. Instead, uh, something that is being explored right now is to uh, combine screens with virtual displays that are displayed around the screen, usually not exactly on top of them because of luminosity issues. Uh, so those virtual displays are displayed using uh, head-mounted displays. So we decided to adopt this, this approach uh, to expand or extend a, a tabletop display with uh, virtual displays that will be uh, placed around the tabletop space. Uh, and those displays will be um, rendered using a hand-mounted display. So uh, two initial considerations of our work is that first we will use flat virtual displays. And why flat is because we mainly wanted to display windows and widgets, not 3D content. And second, that those virtual displays will be vertical uh, vertically placed around the tabletop on the edges, and it was mainly to ensure content visibility. So given this uh, setup and these initial uh, research um, considerations, we we uh, the general question that we ask ourselves is what, uh, what is the performance uh, and the, the ability of the users to perform visual acquisitions on those vertical virtual displays around the tabletop? And uh, we um, uh, we decided to explore three research questions. First one is, what is the time effort required for the user to move his gaze from the horizontal tabletop to a target on the vertical virtual displays and vice versa? Second, we ask ourselves how uh, whether can users simultaneously perceive portions of the horizontal and of the vertical displays? And third, uh, we wanted to know if users can visually perceive the tabletop screen in the peripheral visual space, that is when the gaze of the user is out of the head-mounted display, and how will this affect uh, target acquisition? So um, we uh, uh, we designed a study where the target, where the task was to acquire a visual target in this uh, in this space composed of a tabletop and the virtual uh, vertical displays. And so uh, each trial started with the user looking at one of the displays, so either the horizontal tabletop or one of the vertical virtual displays where the instructions were, um, were rendered. Uh, and after the user uh, clicked on a button, which started the, the timer, uh, the instructions showed the target to, to reach and so the user had to visually uh, acquire that target, which was a word, and say the word at loud, which uh, was detected by the head-mounted display and automatically ended the, the timer. So in this study, we uh, we explored four uh, factors. The first one was the vertical display position, and we considered two positions, front and right, uh, from the user. Uh, so we discarded the left because our study was already quite long, actually, so to reduce the length of the study, and also because we uh, we suppose that uh, the results on the left will be symmetrical to the results on the right. The second factor was the target position, uh, and so we use a three by three grid of targets on each display, as you can see here. The third factor was the direction of the transition, and we consider two directions. So on the left, you can see a trial that started on the tabletop and ended on the virtual display. And we also consider the other direction. So trials that started on the on the virtual display 
and the user had to acquire a target on the tabletop. So we really wanted to explore uh, the two directions because uh, we think that any uh, real application that will be uh, displayed in this in this uh, display space will require users to uh, switch from one display to another alternatively. The fourth and last factor that we explored was the tabletop display modality. Uh, so since we wanted to know whether users can visually acquire the targets of the tabletop screen in the peripheral uh, vision, uh, we uh, we applied two conditions for displaying the, the targets of the tabletop. The first one was we use the tabletop screen itself, which means that the target are always rendered and people uh, or participants can watch them on the peripheral vision. The second one is that, uh, which we call virtual overlay, is when um, the targets are displayed using the HMD. Uh, and so in that case, obviously the participant cannot watch or see the targets in the peripheral vision. And so in this way, we could compare both conditions and see if participants actually use their peripheral vision. So we use a speechy tabletop and the HoloLens 2 as the head mounted display. And we had 12 participants for this study. And we measure the target acquisition time, the maximum amplitude of head movement, uh, the HMD's uh, field of view at the end of the trial to see if uh, participants uh, could see both the horizontal tabletop and the vertical virtual displays. And we also collected, collected some subjective measures such as the perceived exertion or the user preference. So uh, regarding the results on the trial duration per vertical display, the results show that participants took more time to acquire a, a target on the right than on the front. The trial duration by tabletop display modality show that people took more time to acquire a target when using the virtual overlay than the tabletop screen which seem to indicate that actually people use the peripheral vision uh, to uh, visually acquire the targets when the target is displayed on the tabletop screen. We also, uh, so to, to continue exploring this idea of people looking at the targets using the peripheral vision, uh, we computed the number of times when uh, the target was actually in the head mounted display field of view uh, when using a tabletop screen. And we can see that the results show that uh, as the targets, uh, so we look at the three rows of targets on the tabletop, so top, center, and bottom, and uh, people uh, tend to um, uh, acquire the targets uh, as they go through the bottom uh, more times out of the field of view. So which, which again uh, indicates that actually in this case, for the bottom, people were looking at the targets under uh, the HoloLens, under the head-mounted display. Regarding our, our, our question of whether people can look at different uh, displays at the same time, so we computed the head-mounted display field of view coverage. Uh, so here, this is a heat map where uh, the red parts indicates that these areas are more often within the HMD field of view. Uh, and on the left, you can see the results when people acquire a target at the bottom of the front display and uh, on the right when people acquire a target at the bottom of the right display. And you can see that in those cases, people can slightly uh, see uh, two displays at the same time. So either the front and the tabletop or front tabletop and a little bit of the uh, right tabletop and a little bit of the front. Uh, which could indicate that actually we could, in this case, have information that is displayed on both displays and people could actually look at them. So using these results, we derived uh, different uh, scenarios uh, and different applications. So the first one on the left derives from the fact that acquiring, target, acquiring uh, targets at the bottom of the tabletop is is uh, more difficult. And so uh, one idea could be to use this area, not actually to display information, but instead as an input uh, interaction space, where for instance, the, the, the user uh, could touch it uh, to move uh, a cursor when looking at the, at the virtual display in front of him. The second uh, application that we 
we imagine is in the in the center is that since uh, participants can actually look at the tabletop using their peripheral vision, we could use the tabletop uh, to display notifications uh, when the participant is looking in front of him. And so those notifications will be perceived and then the user will be able to look down and, and watch the detailed notification. On the right, uh, since participants can watch at the same time the lower parts uh, of the virtual displays and the tabletop, we could use this lower part of the front display uh, to show a menu, for instance, uh, that can complement the content of the tabletop here, uh, a map. So in our paper, to conclude in our paper, we um, we derive and we, we detail a set of design guidelines for interfaces that, are, that combine a tabletop and virtual content using a hand-mounted display. So if you are interested in this type of, of environment or for deep display setup, uh, please have a look at our paper. Uh, as a perspective, uh, first, we would like to consider a more ecological task. So in our case, in our study, the task was rather abstract. It was about looking, finding words. Uh, and so it would be interesting to study this environment, this setup uh, for a task that actually requires to look for content in more ecological applications. And in this case, we could then uh, uh, collect new measures, such as the, the impact of the information density. So if there is more information on the front, on the right, or on the tabletop, and also about the data layout. Second perspective will be to study the impact uh, of this kind of display environment on a multi-user setup, because uh, we expect that maybe the, the virt vir uh, vertical virtual displays can interfere uh, with uh, the communication with other people that will be standing in front or on the right. Uh, so this is something we would like to, uh, to study in the future. And our third and last perspective will be to study uh, how to interact within this environment uh, and what will be the best input interaction uh, modalities and, and techniques uh, to select content and uh, um, maybe uh, select content either in the front, on the right, or on the tabletop. And for this, we could exploit, obviously, the, the touch interaction on the tabletop, but maybe we could also bring other devices, uh, such as smartphones, or uh, also interaction in midair. And this, will, this is something that we would like to, um, to study in the future. So thank you for your attention.